So this is my workbench file. At the moment, I've just got my uh, chassis geometry. Uh, this is in ACP. So this was provided to me by uh, Hashan. So he's kind of the aerodynamic side of it. He's specified this external geometry to be the optimum aerodynamic solution. And then it's my turn to take that geometry and, and optimize the composite layup to give us the best structure. So what I mean by these external geometries is correct. We can't, we, well, we shouldn't change any of the external dimensions because that's going to impact the aerodynamics. So we need to take these external faces and then deal with the composites inside these faces. Obviously, not everything on the, the structure is, is uh, critical. I'm going to be focusing on the chassis, this blue part here. Um, I'm going to be focusing on that, laying that up, and I'm going to do uh, a torsional test on the material, on, on the on the chassis. So I would be, well, this might be something that would be during some hard cornering. You have a, a longitudinal twisting of the chassis. So these front wheels would be uh, uh, talking around. Uh, we're going to have a moment around our chassis, and that's going to be transferred down. And es essentially, the the twisting is going to terminate at this this rear kind of uh, connection to the engine and subassembly kind of thing. So because we're just looking at the chassis, a lot of the details of this model can go. Uh, we've got a lot of additional details that we're not going to need. So we have chassis there. I'm going to quickly show you what we've got. We've got the forward bulkhead here. You can see that this is solid geometry. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we need shell geometry to do the composite layout. Um, so the way that we would convert this into a, shell, a solid, uh, sorry, a shell structure, it's it's nice and straightforward. We want the external faces of this structure because that's what's been uh, defined by our aerodynamics team, essentially. So I'm going up here to select. So I can select any of these external faces. If I then double click, you can see I now have 46 faces. Um, it's just it knows that I'm trying to pick the external surfaces of the structure. You can see it has missed a few, the, the forward bulkhead. So I'm holding control and I'm selecting that also. And the rear bulkhead, selecting that. Now all I'm going to do is do control C for copy. And now I'm going to turn off the chassis and do control V. I now have a surface of my composite chassis. So that's now shells, that's good to go. But one thing you should always do when you're, when you're dealing with this geometry is look for any issues you might have going forward. So that's things like, um, I know there's one here. We've got this really small little edge because there's a misalignment between the rounds. That's going to be something that we're going to have to deal with at the meshing stage if we can't remove it in uh, geometry cleanup. One of the other things is that because we took the external faces, sometimes they don't line up too well. I'm zooming in really far, but you can actually see that we have this overlap of the curves in this little area uh, based on the original geometry. So there's a lot of cleanup tools that are integrated into SpaceClaim. I'm just going to repair. Stitch is a really good one. So that's going to look for gaps. So on these rounds, there was a gap because the, the 3D geometry, when we converted it into shells, it didn't pick up that edge correctly. So I'm just going to go stitch. And it's looking for edges that are within 0 0.1 millimeters of each other. And you can see that it's picked up a few, highlighted in red, right on those rounds. I'm just going to go OK, and it's going to fix them. So if we zoom back in again, we ordered to see a single line this time. So that's going to help. Uh, help us to generate a really good mesh. So when I was talking about, let me get our full geometry back. When I was talking about 
the loading and the analysis that I want to do, I'm talking. I was talking about um, essentially applying a load to the front wheels and holding the back wheels steady. We need to think about how we're going to do that in the FEA analysis because we want it to be realistic, but we also want it to be efficient. So I, I don't want to have to model the wheels. I don't want to have to model the suspension elements at all. But what is important is where that suspension is joining up to our structure. So we want to, well, what I want to do is apply those loads to the locations on the, on the chassis where the loads would be applied in, in real life. And that's through these intersections with the suspension components. So what I want to do is imprint these, um, these connection points onto my chassis. So I'm just going to get my surface chassis and the suspension. And also, I should have mentioned that, so the engine is attached to the structure. Well, this is the engine subassembly. It's, it's very basic. Um, that is attached to the chassis. The, the rear suspension is attached to that subassembly. So there is a location of contact between the chassis and this engine, which I'm going to imprint these little surfaces. So we go to prepare up the top and we have this imprint tool. So this is going to go through and it's going to find faces which are coincident to each other. So an intersection point. Um, you can see it's picked up a lot. Um, we have a red circle around each of the intersections of the suspension components as well as the engine. So I'm going to go through and say imprint. And now if I hide my suspension and my engine, I have these little patches on my structure, which is perfect for me to say, apply a load to my structure through these patches. And that's going to be more realistic to the structure in real life. So one of the other things that I think would be cool to demonstrate is if this roll bar was made of composites, it's quite a complex shape. Um, it would be a really interesting example of, of some of the different ways that you can manufacture composites. So rather than laying up this big chassis, um, you could use a, a, a weaving machine or a winding machine to create this tubular structure, and then you would set it in a mold uh, into this shape. So some of the things that you would need to do to analyze this component is a little different to the things that you would need to analyze this chassis. So I'm gonna include it in my model. Again, you can see it's it's solid by this little icon. We need it to be shell. I'm just gonna do select again. I have one face. I'm going to then double click and I have 33 faces. So I've got all of the external faces of my roll bar. I'm going to do control C for copy. Let's hide it. Control V. There we go. We have our surface for the roll bar. There's an intersection point. There's a new intersection point between my roll bar and the chassis. So let's do prepare, imprint. It's picked up those faces, imprint. So now I've got little patches there for them to be connected by. The next thing would be to think about how this chassis would actually be manufactured. If I just take this chassis in one piece over to ACP and say, apply material, it's not going to be very realistic to the kind of um, fabrication process that it would take to build a chassis like this. You, you wouldn't build it in one piece. You would have two pieces and then you would bond them together. So we need to think about how you would adjust this model to kind of simulate that fabrication process. And the way that I'm thinking of doing it is if we fabricated this component, top half, bottom half, in two different molds, and then bonded it together. So to do that, I want to cut my chassis in half. Um, so I'm going to go to design up here. And I just want to, I don't actually need to cut it. I just need to imprint an edge so I can then select my fabric shapes for the top half of the chassis and select my fabric shapes for the bottom half of the chassis. So I'm going to use this split tool. So it splits a face based on some different tools. So let's start off with the forward bulkhead. 
I've selected the face and I can use this tool to cut it in orthogonal directions. So if I want to cut it in half, I've gone onto an edge here and you can see that it's projecting a line that would cut it in half. This percentage that you see there, 41.1%, that's distance along the line. I'm at 41.1% of the length of that edge. So if I did 50%, that's going to be cutting it in half. So I'm going to type 50% and enter. So I, I now have that face separated into two parts, top half of the chassis, bottom half of the chassis. So I'm going to go through and do that for the rest of the structure. So this surface, because it has this curvature in it, it's a little bit more complicated than the front face. So I'm going to use a different tool. So rather than just orthogonally cutting, I'm going to select two points. On one edge, I obviously want it to line up with my initial cut, my initial split, sorry. And then I've got a second split point. So I get that percentage again. I'm going to type 50. I've then split the face down the middle. I'm going to go through and do this on all of them. So I select one point, 50, split. I'll do this on all of the surfaces that I need to, working my way around. 50, 50, nearly there. Uh, where are you? Zero, two, 50. So if you were to manufacture your chassis in a different way, you would just be modifying this stage to make it more realistic to what you want to do because that's going to have an impact in fiber orientations and fabric shapes that you want to account for in your analysis. Here we go, last one. Boom. So we have everything we need to then go through and select the top half kind of deal like this and then select the bottom half and we can lay up our composite like we are going to in, in reality. Last thing, um, so I want to apply my loads through the wheels. So there is a, a, a distance between where I'd be applying my load and the structure. So one of the easiest ways of accounting for this gap would be to select that, um, that location where you want to apply the loading and just put a uh, coordinate system there. So I've gone up there and I've just pressed uh, assigned it to that face. I'm going to assign it to the other wheel. Got two coordinates so I can now get rid of my wheels and what I'm going to do is apply a displacement at this origin and a displacement at this origin and I'm going to attach that to my my structure and I'm going to twist this chassis one, I want to see how stiff it is, what's its rigidity, um, torsional rigidity, and I also want to see if it's safe. If we encounter this amount of torque in real life, am I going to damage my structure? All right, so we are ready to go with that model. So I'm going to save, Control S, and then return to Workbench.